Hey guys, so today for you I have, whoops, leak code problem number 43, which is the multiplying strings question. So you're given two strings and you're asked to multiply them. Now obviously you could just convert them both to integers, multiply them, convert it back to a string and return it, but you're not allowed to do that because that wouldn't be as much fun. So in this one you have to look at everything character by character and then you can convert it to an int and all that kind of jazz. So, so in this example, I'm going to show you how to multiply 1, 2, 3 times 4 times 6, 4, 5, 6. And before we begin, um, okay, so we'll say our first string, this one's going to be I, and this one is going to be a J. Sorry, my I kind of looks like a J. But those are how you do the cool eyes, like in math. So live with it. So in this question, what makes this question interesting is that sometimes you'll get numbers that are bigger than 10. So you have to deal with that. So for example, when we multiply 6 times 3, this is our return value where we're storing our uh, answer. It's an integer array. So when you multiply 6 times 3, you get 18. But you want it to end up looking like, like 1 and then 8 over here. But it's kind of annoying to do that all right away. So Because you might have to do it sort of a lot. So what we can do is we can actually just save that till the end. So we can say, okay, I put an 18 here then put a bunch of other values here, and and then we can kind of deal with that all in one step at the end. So I'll show you how we do that when we get there. Um, One other thing that makes this thing a little bit challenging is where you want to put your numbers. So when you're multiplying the ones place by the ones place, you obviously want it to go in the ones place, which is going to be our last thing in the array. When you're multiplying our ones place by the tens place, you want it to be in the tens place. So that's two away. Tens times tens is 100, so it's three away. And as you can see, what I'm kind of getting at is how many away it is from here is um, if you add these two, two together and then you kind of subtract two, that's how much it is. So if like, if you're, um, so like this is the ones place, this is the ones place, one plus ones place is two's place. So, well, I'll just show you the formula. So you take your length and then you subtract your um you subtract your string length. Hang on. Well your length of your array is your string length. So actually what I could do I set my array.length equal to my string 1.length plus my string 2.length. So we can actually do a little bit of refactoring to make this a little bit easier. So this would give us string 1.length plus, and I know I'm missing the parentheses, but I'm trying to keep it smaller, 2.length minus string 1.length plus i minus or two dot length plus j plus one. So we add string one, delete string one, add. Uh, so we can get rid of our string one and string two dot lengths, both of them. So really it's just i plus j plus 1 is where we put it. Oops. You always learn something when you make a video, so it's pretty nice, actually. And this will only work if you make your total length of your return array equal to, um, equal to the sum of the lengths of both of your other arrays. So we'll, we'll just move this over. Oops. Okay, so i plus j plus 1. And we start off 
Um, our J is our, whoops, hopefully don't run out of battery. So our J would start off as like two. We started off at the end. So, whoops, this is an I. I equals two and J equals two. So what we do is we're, we're going to create kind of two for loops and we're going to loop through all of these and then increment this and then loop through them all again, increment that. So we say six times three, 18, put it here. That's the spot it goes in. Five times three, 15, put it here. That's the spot it goes in. Four times three, 12, put it here. That's the spot it goes in. And then we'll say, okay, I, I wasn't really incrementing J, but you get the point. So now we're going to multiply 6 by 2, and we're going to put it here. But now when we're doing it, we want to see if there's any values here. And there's also zeros in all of these by default. So we're going to say, okay, 6 times 2, 12. We already have 15 here, so we'll say we'll add it, and we'll put a 27. So 27. And then... We'll say 5 times 2, 10. We'll add it to whatever's here, so we'll say 22. And then we'll say, okay, 4 times 2, 8. We'll add it to whatever's here. And then we increment R, I. We're going to live life on the edge. I equals 0. Actually, we're not going to live life on the edge. Hang on. Sorry, I usually live life on the edge, but I just made this video and then I found a better way of doing it. Uh, I'll kind of explain how I was doing it earlier. But okay, so we um we multiplied our four and our two, so that's eight. And then we um Okay, so then our i is zero. Um so multiply our six and our one, and I believe it should go here. Maybe. Let's see. So our six and our one. So two. So it should go in the three spot. So we'll add it here. So 28. Then our five and our one. So this becomes 13. And then our four and our one. So this becomes a four. Now what we can do is we can create a, a variable called like extra. And what we're going to do is we're going to set it equal to zero. And what this variable is going to re represent is kind of an extra that we need to add on. So you'll see what I mean in a second. So we'll say, okay, 18 equals 18 plus extra. So it's still extra. And then what we're gonna gonna say is extra equals extra divided by or extra equals eighteen extra equals this value divided by ten. So our extra will now equal to one. And then we'll say this number equals this number mod ten. So we'll get rid of the one. So then we get here. So we'll say extra we'll we'll say this value equals this value plus extra. So this is becomes 28, and I shouldn't have deleted the 2, but this becomes 28. And extra becomes extra divided by 10. So extra, ugh, extra becomes this value divided by 10. So extra becomes 2. And then this value equals this value mod 10. So we get rid of the 2. So then we do the same thing here. We add um, the 2 to this. We add extra to it. So we say 30. And then we'll say extra equals this number divided by 10. So our extra is 3. 
And then we'll say this number equals this number mod 10. So it becomes a zero. And we'll say this number equals this number plus extra. So 16. Um, extra equals this number mod 10 or divided by 10. So we say one. We can get rid of the one. And then we'll say extra equals, or this number equals this number plus extra, so this becomes a five. And then um, this zero is terrible. Extra equals, okay, so that's a five. Extra equals uh, that value divided by 10. So extra is now zero. This number equals this number divided by 10, but it's still 5. We'll look at this number even though we don't need to. Um, we still should, actually. So, um, this number equals this number plus extra, 0. And then we'll do some extra calculations, but it doesn't matter because we're done. So then with our string value, or when we want to convert this back to a string, we'll create a string builder. We'll loop through it until we find a variable, a value that's not 0. Um, so we'll loop through it. We'll say, okay, this is the first not zero, and then we'll add everything else I onto it. So I was talking about what I was doing before. So before I kind of understood the good way to do it. Um, I was just saying, okay, I'd put an 18 here, and then I'd say, I'd kind of create like a while loop, and while you have like an extra value, um, uh, it's kind of, um, I'll just give you like a little better example that'll like kind of make more sense. Um, so say this is like a, an eight. This is like a, a, an eight. Well, this is say we got a bunch of nines. So we'll say this is a nine. And I realize this probably might be like impossible, but like how my logic was working before is I would say like, say um, I was adding like, uh, uh, say I was like taking this number and I was like adding like nine to it. So I would say like, okay, instead of just adding nine to it and saying putting an 18 here, I would say like, okay, this is 18. And then I would directly, like, before I'd even, like, finished, like, everything else, like, before I went to the next step, I would say, okay, my extra value is, an, is a 1, so I'm going to put it here. And then I'd make this a 10. So then I'd say, like, okay, my extra value is a 1, so I'm going to put it here, make this a 10. And then I'm like, okay, my extra value is a 1, so I'm going to put it here and make that a 1. I was doing it kind of like that. Um, now that I think about it, it probably doesn't make too much of a difference. But the way I showed you is a lot simpler to do it in code than the way I showed you because I think it's impossible to get more than like one extra at a time for that um, while loop to go more than maybe one space. But I could be wrong. So let's see, because like, when you're comparing these numbers, you just have these two values. Then, so like after your first, um, you could hit all four of these values your first time through when, um, when I equals two. So you could hit these four values. So these four could all have numbers. Yeah, okay, so it could be possible. And then your first value on your next way through would go into this spot. So your first time through, um, you can hit the first four numbers. So then you could hit these numbers. So there, there could be a lot of like repeating, like kind of what I just showed you, like carrying over. But you don't want to have to do that a lot of times. The way I showed you, you're only going to have to do that once, which is a little bit better. Um, it's the same big O, but yeah, so it's big O of whatever this number is times this number. So like IJ or MN. Um, 
I'll put the code in my GitHub in the description and also tag the leak code problem. So thank you guys for watching and I hope you enjoyed. Live life on the edge.